Hi there, folks. Uh, my name is Kevin Riggle. Uh, I run a little cybersecurity consultancy called Complex Systems Group. Uh, this is the War Stories podcast on Critical Point, uh, and we are here with Willie Williams to talk about that time he broke production, because that's what we do here, uh, telling incident stories in public. Um, and so, Willie, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and uh, then you know, tell us what it was that got you into a place where uh, you could break something? Uh, somebody sure, sure. Uh, I'll go... I'll go in kind of in reverse order, which is sure. uh, right now I'm the CEO of Mori, which is a genealogy startup. Um, but prior to that, I, I've spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley and San Francisco kind of doing startups. Um, but uh, this story actually takes place way back when, uh, when I was at MIT um, and I was actually a summer intern. Um, so <laughs> summer interns yes those are dangerous <laughs> where were you interning at uh, akamai at the time okay okay and so i know what akamai is because i worked there we might have even overlapped uh uh but uh for our viewers who've never heard of it which is a surprising fraction of people what is akamai well that's a great question now um but okay. back in the day because i'm sure they've evolved back in the day this is let's say circa 2004 um, coming out of the uh, dot com bust, Akamai was a uh, was you know it was a it was an awesome company that rose in the in the late nineties early two thousands. And primarily, what they did was the way I used to describe it to folks is uh, if you were gonna run a, an ad for the Super Bowl, and in the ad you were gonna link to a website, you probably wanted the website to run Akamai servers instead of your own. Because they they had all this technology that allowed this like these large bursts of traffic, um, uh, and they can handle it, and you know your your service wouldn't go offline at the most critical moment. Um, these days, you know, Cloudflare Cloudflare is a is a great example, kind of these like edge network setups and CDNs and whatnot. But twenty years content ago, distribution was, network is the yeah, yeah and Akamai yeah. was the first or one of the first, if I yeah. recall. And one of the few Web 1.0 companies to survive, although that was a near thing uh, for yeah, many years. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, and they were, and I mean, they were MIT as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The current CEO is like still a MIT professor, and when I would work career fairs, I would get people coming up being like, "Oh, you're Akamai! I took Professor Layton's class because he taught algorithms mm -hmm. like every yeah. other yeah. spring semester," and people were like, ah, which was always fun. Um, yeah. So what were you doing at Akamai? What team were you on? So um, I, it was me and another intern, and we were working on Akamai's geolocation services at the time. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we have to, again, transport back to 20 years where we aren't the internet carrying... Of... <laughs> right. Yeah, there, there's... In the internet of, we don't know exactly where you are, right? Right. And... Right. Uh, we don't carry these little GPS chips in our phones or all the devices type of thing. And most people are on desktops even rather than just laptops. And so... And probably on dial -up, still in 2004. Yeah. Is we had DSL, but yeah, a lot of people still on dial. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was like very, very special um, <laughs> to have, to have certain, like university speeds. I remember that. Um, yeah. oh, I have yeah, another yeah. great story uh, from a friend. And maybe I'll tell you afterwards. But... Okay. Um, and so Akamai uh, had, had very smartly figured out that if you could determine where a computer was sending the request from, geographically, they could route the request to the nearest server they had, right? And so allowed, uh, you know, allowed you to drop latency um, and uh, it kind of like, it also gave it information on, you know, maybe where they should put more servers in, in certain data centers. And that's how and, you handle those. Um, and that's how you handle those Super Bowl spikes, right? Is by uh, rather than sending all of the traffic across the country to your server and without loss of generality, Cupertino, uh, you send it to a server that is closer to the user, and so you save the backbone for only the important stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and and as, as Google was actually proving out right about that time, right? Like latency has a qualitative effect. Um, and, you know, it's this distribution. If the one tail of the distribution kind of goes above a certain level, it's not that those users just wait around for that response to come back. They actively go and do something else. Um, yeah. And so the faster you can make 
uh, the websites, uh, the more users engage and work with them, um, and you know, the better your Super Bowl app will perform. Uh, and so the system that was built for doing this was, uh, Akma just had logs and logs and logs of, um, like ping traces, like trace route data, right. That they had from everywhere. And it was just, uh, just strings. Right. And so that's, um, so that's like from here to here on the internet, it takes like. 50 milliseconds to get to this hop the next you know hop and yeah. 50 milliseconds and then you know five hops later you're at the and so this was just like trace route data between basically all the servers that Akamai ran or okay. yeah yeah right exactly but it, but what it also would do um is within there you had n names right mm -hmm. and so you okay. would see like oh like if I did this for my dorm you would see you know I have my IP, but then we would, you could see like MIT.edu, right? And then it would go up to the Cox network, right? And then over and then back down into like the local ISP, right? Okay. Um, and it, it turns out that those names provided signal information. Right? Okay. And so the yes. project was to map, to map these um, like host names to locations, right? And so it, it, we okay. were one part of an effort, which was like, okay, we figure out a general area Right. Um, and then uh, they could use, they actually did a very cool thing where they would like triangulate um, oh, uh, where the final location was because they could send like three pings, right? Okay. And, or a series of three pings and like between three geographically like distributed data centers. And, uh, and you know, given the response time, you can draw those three lines and kind of see, oh, yeah, this okay. person is probably in. Um, in Morovia pile or something like that. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, the, but the, in, so the interns, they, they had set most of this up. Like we kind of knew what was going on, but it's an intern project and they were, and they were, they were like, we need you to improve on the system. Um, it's really like, great. Uh, so they, they so uh, they'd already in. figured out that like an MIT.edu, uh, uh, IPU was like probably localized at the Cambridge area, Cambridge, Massachusetts, <laughs> but, the question was now, how do we do one better than that? Yeah, yeah, they, they and they had, um, they, they, well, they realized this technique had produced some fruit, I might say okay. this way, and they were like, well, yeah. we'd love it to produce, you know, more fruit. Uh, okay. and, and so, the, the, you know, day one was literally, we sat down, and they were like, here's what we got, uh, and we, you know, opened up the file, and okay. it was a... 10,000 line, 20,000 line Perl script. Okay. Right? Uh, just, love it. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know it was who wrote it, we was just handed with... It was 2004 and it was Akamai, and that was how we did everything back in those days. That's how we did everything in those um, Yeah, I mean, uh, I, as, a, as a side story, uh, I was in the MIT Media Lab, and we once lost a server, right? For, for anyone who's never lost a server where you're like, oh, I, we know it's here. We just don't right. know where it is. Like. It pings on the network. <laughs> we just don't know physically where the yeah. box is. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you know, these are, these are the things they were. So, so we yes. we looked at this script and we were like, we should do something better, you know. And like like all computer science students do at least once in their lives, we were like, we're going to design a language to do this, ah, right? like kind of yes. a domain specific language to. To allow us some some primitives, I know, I know. <laughs> to, to allow us it was some in the water, kind of like sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in the water. Like the Ruby on Rails folks were just getting going. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so we kind of had progressed through the summer. We we right. took this approach. We progressed through the summer. We and I mean, it actually to be honest, worked pretty well. And one day, I'll, I'll say it was probably about two thirds of the way through the summer. Um, we walk in. And the Alchemy office was not a high activity office. Like they used to have the NOC, which was their like network operations command center. And that one was, you know, it, that looked cool. That looks like something yeah. that was sold every single, to every single college student because it had all these screens, you know, it looked like something out of a Bond movie. But mission our, control, our it was mission was, control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our area was not. Our area yeah. was like, it was, we had a lot of fun. Uh, everyone was great, but it was, it was a quiet. It was a bunch of engineers working. Yeah. And I'll just, yeah, I'll say it's a, I'll say it's a Tuesday. Sure. Um, and we walk in on this Tuesday and it's probably, you know, July, late July. 
and our office is on fire. People are running back and forth and, and, you know, and just up and down and like thinking, in turn, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, folks are, folks are doing stuff. But, but we, you know, Something's we had our happening. own little project, own little right. office. They stuck us, yeah, they stuck yep. the two interns in the little closet, right? And we kind of like yep. worked in of there and, and drank soda. Um, there we go. That's the same. And, and so I got in uh, and I spent about like an hour working. And just outside the door, we could see folks running back and forth, running back and forth, running back and forth. <laughs> well, huh? <laughs> and uh, after about an hour and a half, uh, our boss, um, uh, who, who's a great fellow, <laughs> and he's, I wish I could hold it. He's like holding a phone, right? He's like, yeah. but you know, uh, one of the, one of the old wireless phones. And, and he kind of like peeks his head into our office and he's like, Hey guys, how you doing? I'm like, oh, we're good. He's like, did you guys happen to, uh, push a change last night? We're like, yeah, yeah, probably, probably. You know, we were uh, pushing them regularly. Yeah, it's just like right before, you know, right before we went to bed. It's like, oh, interesting. Um, okay, and did, did you know? Did it have to do with like the, the domain name project, like the, the the or the host name project with the pings and all stuff? It's like, well, like, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing we work on. He's like, huh? When did you push that change? We were like, you know, go and look at the log. Uh, and he was like, oh, stay right here for a second. And his office was right next door. So he, like, okay, walked yeah. back into his office. Yeah. Kept hanging out, hung out, came back five minutes later. Um, he's like, do you know, and I really, the, the best part of that story is if I had this guy's name, but I, I, I still cannot remember it. He's like, do you know who so-and-so is? And we're like, no. He's like, you should look him up. Uh, you know, Google it. Google is still newer. We're like, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, and he was the CTO of Yahoo, right? Okay. And he was like, how much is he worth? And he was like, $2.1 billion or something at that time, right? It's um, back when Yahoo was still well, a yeah. big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, Sorry, and, Yahoo. And, uh, and, and we're like, cool, we still have you know, no idea. And, he, and then he like reaches up and unmutes his phone. And all you hear is just a stream of yelling. Right, cursing, like flowing out of this phone. You can hear voices, and it's just punctuated by more yelling. Right, someplace, <laughs> and then he like, he's like, mute. Um, and he's like, uh, this, so that's going to go away in a second <laughs> because we figured out what the problem was, <laughs> and the problem turned out to be that the change you pushed last night, um, you know, kind of filtered through our system. But the end result was we ended up, our systems believed all the traffic coming from Yahoo was coming from Yahoo Japan. And so we routed, we were routing everything back over the Pacific and then back over to the US, <laughs> which is okay. like, at the, at the time, burning them, I'm sure, millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those um, exchange costs are not not cheap even today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I mean, it, it was the, the and you know the, the internet of twenty years ago was not as um, you know uh, didn't have as many people on it. The advertising dollars were uh, percentage points of what they are now, right. um, and it was still a lot of money. And day. yeah, and he was like. Don't do that again. <laughs> yeah. And and I think I think to Akamai's credit, uh, we never heard another thing about that ever again. Really? And we, okay. we finished our project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, went yeah. on with our lives. I mean, if if you hadn't done it, somebody else would have. Like you know, that's the nature of the uh, the nature of that kind of work. So what was so okay. So can you say a little bit more about what the change was? You had just, you had pushed out a new geo mapping database or? Yeah, yeah, R roughly every, uh, we would we would make upgrades to our system for, for roughly mapping text to um, location, right? Okay. So we would look at okay. these string, we had that we had, you know, a, a, a set of levels of location, um, okay. like, you know, country, city, town, okay, kind sure. of like levels, like, um, Later on, you call I would call them like geocodes or whatnot. Um, sure. 
and then we just had these this trace route data, like these trace route lines, right. right? And we would, okay. to the best of our knowledge, like try and get as close as possible. Um, and so you're actually doing this kind of heuristically. You're you're you've got a what was a line in the Perl script that said like if this yeah. you know trace route line matches dot yeah. mit dot edu, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. uh, you know return like. Uh, Cambridge, Cam Massachusetts, return basically. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Re okay. Or, yeah. Yeah, or zip code or something. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And, and so you've, you've, you've um, replaced this Perl script, this this god awful monstrosity of a Perl script, with this DSL for describing <laughs> these rules. And so you ship out a new version of this. And this is running. This is this like this isn't running on every request. Well, for, so so our little part is is. Um, is not right, but what they would do is they would yeah. batch process it, right, okay. and then okay. store it in a key value store, right. So then, Got when it. they okay. would see this data come back, they could like Got very it. quickly do these lookups. Okay, right, right, right. Uh, when the DNS request comes in, there's some like which IP address should we return logic, <laughs> which is trying to figure out which IP is going to be closest to the end user. I, I should also mention that it, uh, our work was was. Uh, there were two facets to it. One was converting this this Perl script over into a domain specific language, but the other one was actually, you know, doing the work of building heuristics for adding new, you know, new right. uh, mappings. And right. so I think this is ultimately where we actually had screwed up, where okay. you know we were looking and doing something, and um, uh, it's <laughs> actually it, it was vaguely reminiscent of. Um, did you ever play Sim Earth? Yeah, a little bit. With that one, it was kind of like this. Ago. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. like the the second or third game in the series. Um, yeah. But the best part about Sim Earth is uh, if you had forgotten your key or your password, they would give you a qu trivia question, right? Yeah. And it was like, how many you know how many moons does Saturn have, or something like that. Um, and you could give a response, and then you could play the game. Okay. But th you know this is but this is back in ninety three right ninety four. There's no yeah. internet to look stuff up at, and you don't know like uh, what the right. latest like technology is. And so I remember being a kid and being like, okay, if I want to play this game, I need to uh, you know it's like I had to ask for permission to get the password. But if I if I could answer the question, I would go and mm. <laughs> I could get it. oh that's. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Diabolical. It's, it's great, great fodder. Yeah, great fodder yes. for, for a certain type of kid. Um, yes. And I remember, you know, and so you'd go and, like, you would try and find this information out, you know, looking oh, books. Sure. And, you know, I was yeah. hit rate of, like, because the, their, what their, the games view of the world sometimes got outdated, right? I was playing oh, sure. a year right. or two afterwards. Sometimes they discover a new moon of Saturn. Moon of Saturn. And, you know, the, if you look it up, it's like, oh, it's number 14 when they get. Um, anyway, it was a, the the Akamai work was a little bit like that, where you you'd see a, a host name and you'd be like, okay, what do we what do we know about this in the world, right? And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I learned a great many things about, with this lesson about like how you should write tests, um, how you should what what deployment processes look like. I, a lot right. of these things that really helped yeah. like my future self, um, yeah. and I guess that's what like college and college internships are for. Um, yeah, the good but, ones. Uh, yeah, at the time, it's it always talent. a strength of Akamai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was always like um, one of the things that Akamai I thought always did real well, and that we tried to do when you know I had interns uh, was to give them real work and mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to you know sometimes put them in places where they could break the Yahoo, you know, or you know, you know, <laughs> you know because that was also meant that they were working on things that mattered to the people who worked at Yahoo, and so mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 a... so, something about like the understanding of the world had gotten out of date relative to like the script or the like. Yeah. Well, we had we had just. I think the reality is we had just made a mistake. We had sure. somehow yeah. been somewhere in there. We were like, this this host name looks a lot like it should be in uh, California um, okay. when it's really in Japan. Okay. Um, oh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as an example of that, we talk about MIT um, back when you and I were at college. Uh, if your IP address started with 18 dot, 
Uh, mm -hmm. so 18.1.2.3 you know, or 18.27.0.0. Mm -hmm. or what were we, I can't try and remember the IP address of my my mm -hmm. server in COVID, but you know, whatever it was, 18.243.0.151. Um, like any <laughs> anything 18. Dot or after like meant that it was an MIT computer, mm -hmm. and so yeah. you could infer. Yeah. And we have that rule. Things about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and within the last five or ten years of bunch of that IP space has gotten sold off, I think, to AWS. And so now you can no longer make that assumption, oh. right? Right? Oh, we keep, <laughs> we keep spinning up EC2 boxes with the, my, some of my client work, and I see that it gets an 18 dot IP address, and it just, oh. it makes me, it makes me feel things. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, I like, because of how IPv4 worked and how, you know, uh, IPv6 adoption never took off. Like this IP address has gotten increasingly <laughs> valuable, and I, Akamai, you know, Akamai owned a lot of them, and AWS owned a lot of them for the work they did, did, and MIT owned a lot of them and didn't need nearly as many of them as we had. But so, like as an example, like I know that there are still servers around there that do because I have was responsible with for one until a couple of years ago, which did a certain amount of like, well, if you have an 18 dot IP address, that means you're probably an MIT student or, you know, affiliate and therefore allowed to access <laughs> these things. And I'm not sure that that got updated when those IPs got reassigned. <laughs> and I'm lucky that that mm -hmm, did mm -hmm. not resulted in any traffic getting routed to Japan accidentally, but like exactly the same kind of, um, yeah, same kind of change. So, and when you were deploying things, what did that look like? That looked like some cowboy stuff. Okay. <laughs> like yeah. I think, yeah, I think I think it was. I, I think there were there were a couple of different failures of, of process here. Um, sure. uh, it, it, we used version control, but I think it was CVS. And oh, interesting. Yeah, you know, we were. Yeah, uh, I mean, just just sign of the times. Um, yeah, and, and we were on Perforce in my era, and that's also a, the best version control system that 2004 can provide so like yeah. yeah yeah um and we yeah i mean we just there were i mean again both optimize credit i think uh they gave us a lot of leeway on on this um and but but there were not you know we didn't have a like release checklist we didn't okay. have any kind of process where it's like we we were going to sign off on this, you know. I think yeah, I think yeah. the thing that uh, the team learned was that I think they thought we were somewhat sandboxed, right? right. I, I don't right. think they yeah. they were thinking that we were going to really like. The, the, I think their assumption was if if these <laughs> if these interns make a mistake, the worst yeah. thing it's going to do is drive up a little bit of latency um, on right. mm, yeah uh, in one particular spot, and so. Um, because if you've you know, been working on like worth core, it for the recruiting. Yeah, if you've yeah. been working on core mapper code, you would might have been using like more of the like serious tooling. Because I know that we had release tooling and like version control stuff built out for that kind of stuff, which was substantially more sophisticated. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, you kind of just threw the code over the wall and like something picked it up that you didn't have to know a whole lot about and right. Yeah, the whole the whole thing was very uh, like loose. Um, yeah, which was which is great. We we learned we got a, we got a lot of room to try stuff. It, oh, I know what I was going to say. It was it, the fix was fairly easy because yeah. we could just go back and look at the the kind of heuristic mapping changes we had made um, yeah. and roughly hit undo and okay. roll yeah. that out. And it was um, I, the, I think the biggest weight weight was. Again, the, the stuff that was kind of outside of our fog of war, uh, which was yeah. all of the real like deployment processes that they right. had for, yeah. for doing these kind of batch operations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you, we would never have rolled that out to like the whole Internet at once. It was like physically impossible to talk to that many servers at once. So there were like like staged rollout yeah. kind of, yeah, and a certain amount of alerting, although, yeah. Um, so I find it a little bit interesting that they didn't give you too much like of an explainer on sort of like what the back end was and how this was going to um, fit in. I'm 
interested that they were kind of just like, well, it's, you know, it's this little piece, but yeah, I, I, well, I think, it, I think it, it helped, it helped us kind of focus down, right. Sure, we had, absolutely. we had this very spe specific problem. Um, yeah. and, uh, and we just, it was like, thinking about this one. I also, I would say like with a grain of salt, this is a story from 20 years ago. They might yeah. have actually done it. And Fair. it was, it was Fair summer. Point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was summer. And this, you know, this is two months in and, yeah. and, um, and is the bright, uh, not the bright spot, but the, the, the burning part of the summer, uh, or of that internship. And so I'm sure there were other parts where, um, they may have walked us through some, some of them. It's like most things, like when you onboard, um, yeah into a system, right? You don't, without a lot of the context, some of the onboarding kind of, uh, isn't as effective as it could be. Yeah, necessarily. And well, and some of the reason, some of the way that you learn things as you spend more time working in a system is when things break, you're like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how that works. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> those two uh, things are linked. I didn't know that. <laughs> those, I mean, and that is, we get into the system safety stuff that I'm always on about, but like, that is the whole work of system safety is discovering what things are, you know, potentially interacting that you don't think are potentially interacting and then figuring out how to constrain that. So I assume one of the constraints was that they maybe put some, did they like put some controls in on like the, uh, rollout of these things or like on what kinds of changes were being made or like, what was there sort of like an evolution of the, um, like process after yeah, that. I mean, um, not visible to us by my okay. memory. You know? Okay, interesting. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think that yeah. I think they they might have like I think I think that the, you know the contract and the abstraction of the internship uh, stayed pretty much the same, right? Okay. You work yeah. on this, yeah. like we map map more of these unknown host names to uh, geolocations. And, you know, and focus your, focus your energy on figuring out how to do that more efficiently or faster or whatnot. Um, and then we will we'll make sure the interns don't foot gun themselves. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> foot gun the, the, the entire company. Well, I mean, like, yeah, it's yeah. cannot possibly have been the first time that we pushed out a bad mapper change and it was not certainly the last because, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, stories that are not mine to tell. And, uh, the, um, yeah, the, you know, so like, yeah, if a couple interns who are working on a fairly constrained project can do something with this kind of impact, then that means that we need to think harder about the, yeah, systems that we're building. We, we, we have the best interns available. So uh, replacing them with new interns is just going to, you're, you're you, and you never made that same mistake again, did you? No, no. I mean, and, and it's, I mean, it's also funny because later on, as as I had interns, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I always thought of this story in terms of like where, you know, where responsibility lies and, and what you want in terms of. I think. I mean, I I really liked um, the leeway that Akamai yeah. gave us. Right. It felt yeah. it felt very uh, like responsible and adultish. Yeah. Um, yeah. For like, hey, we're going to give you a real problem that yeah. we work on and that matters. Yeah. Um, but I also well, know the fact that it was like, sometimes interns just do things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you were, what, like a, maybe a rising senior then? So you were at most a year or two out from actually working on this kind of thing full time. And like, there's just not that much difference from being, you know, a rising senior and, a, you know, new grad hire. Yeah. Like, you know, we they could have given you exactly the same project as a new grad and like had exactly this. So like, yeah, that was also, I don't know, for me, I... Uh, deleted the entire uh, source code repository of my uh, <laughs> my first internship. Mm. And uh, right before the boss was due to get on a plane to uh, mm. come back to the States from England. And similarly, similarly, like, you know, I was working, they put me on real stuff, like I was shipping code to customers from day one, and he was like, not, obviously not happy, but he also walked me through the process of like recovering it and, you know, emailing out to the, you know, project <laughs> list being like, the repository is going to be down for a day while we do this. And he, you know, didn't throw me under the bus. He, he was like, yeah. we need you to be part of the, the, you know, recovery process, but you know, this mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. yeah. And that, 
I think when I had interns, that was something that I kept in mind. Of like, how, what should I think about my, you know, role and responsibility towards these people and their work is like very similar kind of, um, yeah. Very yeah, and it was also it was also very good for me personally that particular internship because that was this transition point because I spent a lot of time, for example, at the MIT Media Lab. Right, and yeah. and I and I love the media lab, and the media lab's great. Yes, um, yes. But the the media lab version of shipping to production was a demo, right? And yeah. demos have this whole demo other day. thing with them about how you know, like how they how they fail and and whatnot. Um, but but there were you know there was a it was kind of like a point in time success, right? Like if if it worked yeah. when you demo, it worked, right? And yes. that's yes. Yeah, yeah, day of, and, and you know, and coming up that and being was like, it. okay, yes. this, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 um, and, uh, and then it didn't really have to work again, you know, <laughs> like, it didn't yeah. work, yeah. you were like, you were on to the next thing, yeah, and, and the Akamai internship, I feel like, was, was one of the turning points where I was like, oh, well, in real systems, you know, this, it doesn't work just in that point in time, it's, it's right. kind of like, for here and forevermore type of yeah. type of work. Um, and what additional kinds of work, what additional magnitude of work is required to take this from something that works day of when you're standing in front of the sponsor to like something that can be operating 24 seven at global scale. Is, yeah. 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 And you, and you actually start to realize that there, there is all of this other tooling and scaffolding and expertise and process that goes into it right um and and that the, for for a whole set i mean this this i've got, I've got a lot of lift war stories as well oh, yeah. um but <laughs> that's a, that's a whole nother episode that's <laughs> a whole nother episode um uh but you know and, and you 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 know when you're when you're a builder and you're starting out as a builder you're like the building is the thing Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a transition point, I think, for that most folks should go through uh, as, as software engineers, where you, you realize that, like, cost wise, like maintenance is the thing yes. and, yes. and like uh, uptime and understand, you know, like and keeping it up and around is actually like the dominant cost. Um, yeah. And so uh, there's a lot of expertise there. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, like the. As the system spends more, as the system becomes more successful and spends more and more time in production, that like prototype period will become a smaller and smaller mm -hmm. fraction of its total uh, mm -hmm. like operational life. And yeah, uh, yeah. There was something you said I wanted a thread I wanted to pull on um, about. I, how did, also did you find it like the difference between working in a place like Akamai and being a CS undergrad? Um, I, well, you know, Akamai, Akamai had, uh, like all adult jobs have a very different feel to them than when you've never had one before. Um, and it's always, it's, it's, it's always something amusing, but I also have to talk a lot of, um, you know, kind of like first job, uh, mentees or interns through, right. Um, around, you know, you you show up right and you work right. and in, in college and in the labs right it's it, it's it's a little like bursty work like i'm just gonna drink red bull and, and well there's no red bull back up but drink drink sure. mountain dew code red um yes. and uh and stay up all weekend and work on this project right yeah. and it was a, a different experience to be like okay you're in at this time like you're expected to be out of this time and and you kind of need like consistent throughput Right. Um, and there's lots of, there's lots of like philosophical things I can get into around, around that. Like, I'm not sure that's yeah. the right way to do it, but that's the, the way it was. The way at Akamai. Um, yeah. And the, and yeah. It's the way, it's the way professionals do it. And, um, that was one of the biggest changes, right. Was because sometimes you're just there. I actually, I actually have a, a funny story about a uh, semi funny story about this, which was as I was going through this transition, um, I, I you know, I rebelled. Right. I was like, okay. this, this is, I literally, there's, I have no good ideas right now. It's like one of these days where I was like, I had no good ideas. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm really poor at like sleep habits. I'm really tired. And at the time I didn't drink coffee. Um, and so 
I was like, I kind of need a nap, right? I think this is, I, I, I'll wake up, I'll wake up refreshed. And there was a, there was a chair that was like a, a reclined lean back chair, yep. uh, right in front of Tom Lane's office. <laughs> 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 so, uh, he was not the CEO at that point, but he was like something else. No, 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 no. He's he was the, I think he was the CTO, and he was always CTO. gone and whatnot. Yes. And, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always like, gone. Hi, Mark. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Uh, and and I was like, you know, you're just I, you don't. Yeah, I mean, I, whatever. I was tired. Yeah. There was a chair. Right. I'm gonna go take a break. And yeah. so, <laughs> so, and I never, I'd never seen him. He, like, he'd been gone, traveling, no. whatnot. Yeah. Very turbulent period. And of course, I'm sleeping when he like returns to his office from some piece of travel and like looks down, <laughs> down at me and it's like rough day or something along the sorts. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. <laughs> and then he goes into his office and I'm like, I feel like I should not be here right now. <laughs> yes, it's time to get back to work. All right, nice. It's time to yeah. get back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I took a couple naps. I took some naps at Akamai. We had a big bean bag in the infosec, and that was occasionally the only way I was going to get uh, the only way I was going to get the rest of the day's work done. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But it, and it also similarly, you know, it, like again to Akamai's credit, he didn't like you know, you yeah, know, yeah, didn't didn't string you up by your toenails like, for yeah, slacking yeah, off exactly. on the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too. Um. But, but was, yeah, you, the, 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 you, you, good. yeah, the social there. There was a social like ah, uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, About the expectations. Yeah, the, the, it was it, it was general, and there were there were so many smart people there that I I really I I, I enjoyed it. You know, you, you uh, it was it was cool. It was cool yeah. and it was fun. Um, yeah. In a, in a way that you know, twenty years ago it was kind of cool to be a programmer, but not like yeah. not like it not, is today. You know, and, yeah. and here were a bunch of people who cared about cryptography, which was the thing I really cared about back then, um, and cared about computer security. And it's like, um, and and you just you get as an intern, you just like you want to bathe in it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also there were not that many places you could go in two thousand and four, which were working at the scale that Akamai was at. Like Google was starting to get there, but mm-hmm. like. I mean, like, maybe one of the other CDNs, I think Limelight was still maybe a going concern at that point, but, like, otherwise, th- there just wasn't, you know, web scale was not nearly the thing that it became even five, you know, years mm-hmm. later, and certainly today, like, you know, everybody's running globally distributed systems, and, you know, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just yeah, not, like... Was... <laughs> the kind of, like, oh, you have servers in where? Uh, uh... Thing was like not nearly such a common thing as it yeah has become so yeah so there weren't all that many oh yeah Matt, I mean, to, like experience that kind of work it, at that kind of scale yeah and, and still I mean today it's still amazing because you know it, like many things I feel like I anchor a little bit on me on my youthful experiences right and sometimes I just look up and I'm like the world is magical Right, right. <laughs> like, there's yeah. a, like we yeah. get, we get globally distributed like software, and you barely have to work for it, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This, this is amazing. It's, I was I was on a call. I like scheduled it, you know, via Slack, and you know, and I used my Calendly link, and like you know, uh, we log onto the call, and I'm like, oh, where are you based out of? And the guy's like, oh, I'm based out of Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm like, yeah. I had no idea you could have been next door, and you know it uh and that's wild it's just like yeah when, when it's good it's like r- really good <laughs> yeah 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 we've they're, actually they're, it's it's there i mean for for probably for good reasons um several of the the startups i've worked on i i now see the versions of uh like th- because they didn't work and right. I see the versions of what it, what we have now, and I'm like, the world's amazing. Like we got yeah. we got there. Um, yeah. It just yeah. it just didn't happen to be us type of thing. Right. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time, and you know. Yeah. I mean, I'll, like, yeah. The number of companies that were like five, ten years too early for something for some reason is like, yeah. Like, 
they could see the other, where the, the world was moving. Thing. They it just wasn't there yet. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the other interesting thing about Akamai that I I I think back on now, um, but I didn't really think too much about then was just the feeling of what technology felt like in the like dark winter of like 2003 and 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I remember I, I walking, I didn't really have the context for this, but I remember walking around the Akamai office and a lot of people had the Akamai stock price. Up, oh yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and and they had they had you know obviously they at one point I'm sure the price was many multiples of where it was yeah then and then like but they were oh, tracking yeah. I remember thinking I was like that doesn't feel healthy no right? <laughs> no <laughs> it's, like, it's not like when the stock price goes up and down yeah yeah it's not and well that was a very like that was a very 90s boom thing and yeah that was yeah. and I mean Akamai got sort of kicked in the teeth on that one a couple yeah. different ways and yeah but um also a story for a different episode <laughs> so yeah um, but yeah yeah that was that was an interesting time like there there was a there was a long moment in there after this sort of 90s uh you know after the 90s sort of uh period you know you know boom you know there was a long hangover of like Mm -hmm. still like 90s kind of you know still still 90s approaches to building technology as we were you know Mm -hmm. busy trying to figure out how do we do this better and open source is maybe a Mm -hmm. thing and like all these but like hadn't yet taken off again and not till really like what was it 2009 2010 did we start to see the the you know like after the financial crisis did we start to see the next big sort of upswing that we're just coming off now yeah it was a different time then i'm still like (laughs) yeah i'm both nostalgic for parts of it you know the transparent electronics and the uh you know Mm -hmm. uh computers that you know weren't connected to the internet and so didn't need uh, continuous software updates and, uh, the internet was a smaller was a, was, a, was a small village rather than a like you know metropolis to put new york city to shame yeah i i actually have a map the, uh, you know oh, yeah. one of the things in the 90s where they sold they sold like uh, um you know just actually like trace route maps Right. Oh, um, yeah. All, like, but like the clustering, right? And so you know, yeah. There was like the oh, military I remember that. network over here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, yeah. and um, I, I remember getting it in probably ninety five, ninety six. I was like, oh, this yeah. is so cool. And I, I have it at home, and uh, and I just I, I haven't actually looked up at what the multiple is for right. number of people online in like yeah. ninety five versus twenty twenty three. Um, yeah. But it would be interesting. It's interesting to see if you could if that would even appear as like a pixel. You know? Right, right, yeah. <laughs> this tiny that. little, the size of a, the, the internet of that era is the size of a quarter on the map of the internet as it is today. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, don't think yeah. you can even like necessarily build a map like that because if you do trace route, you lose all of the like carrier grade NAT stuff and everything behind people's home mats and blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, 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 like. Well, that was the, that was the other thing I, I remember about this job was, um, the the thing they told us on the first day of this project was if uh AOL is a black hole they were like we okay. get yep. we get not and we, there's this huge you know we, we had the graphs and there's this huge yeah. chunk of the bar chart of like where you know we get traffic from and that the big the biggest chunk was like we we see nothing we know nothing about AOL the traffic goes okay. in and Doesn't comes matter. out and we don't we don't have any visibility interesting do you do do you know why that was? Was it just that they had turned off like the ICM or I forget what packets it is that trace root uses or I I I don't remember uh, okay. now. I, I I knew back then why yeah. why they had yeah. done it, um, okay, yeah. but I don't remember yeah. now what what the cost yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a Reddit post somewhere. Yeah, that, uh, that, that explains it. I'm, I'm really yeah. refraining my, my 
my search hand is like right yeah on. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> well maybe one of the maybe one of the listeners to this podcast will be able to fill us in on the details that that would be if you you have some details or you just feel like if, if we nerd sniped you and you uh, can yeah, you know, yeah, dig yeah. up that Reddit post, do please post, it. Yeah. do please post it in the comments. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, Willie, this has been really great. Um, and uh, if people want to connect with you, where can they find uh, where can they find you online? Um, the probably the best place to find me is on Twitter at okay, Big Willie Style. Great, great, love it. Twitter at Big Willie Style. Uh, I am Kevin Riggle at Kevin Riggle on uh, Twitter as well. Uh, Complex Systems Group is my little cybersecurity consultancy. If you uh, want to talk uh, about how sis- how about, about how your systems break or how to avoid them breaking, do uh, please reach out. And uh, with that, this has been the War Stories podcast on Critical Point uh, with Willie Williams. Thank you so much for your time, Willie. Uh, really enjoyed for sure. this. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Uh, Till next time, folks. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe down below. We're still just getting the channel going, and we'd love to know if people want to see and hear more from us. If you have an incident story you'd like to tell here, please email us at hello at complexsystems.group. Also, we're always looking for people who aren't cis white dudes like me to tell stories. So if that describes you, please feel particularly encouraged to reach out. Now, this one's a bit of a long shot, but I just finished reading a book about deck about Digital Equipment Corporation, which was a major computer manufacturer back in the mini computer days when computers were the size of refrigerators and coincidentally where my grandfather worked in the 70s and 80s. If you worked for DEC or Data General or any of the other computer manufacturers of that day and you have an incident story to tell, please reach out uh, because software incidents didn't just start happening uh, after the internet. You can find me on Twitter as at Kevin Riggle and on Mastodon at Kevin Riggle at IOC.exchange. My consulting company, Complex Systems Group, is on the web at complexsystems.group. And with that, folks, till next time. Mm-hmm.